Hello guys, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to unlock your mana. Because as you guys can see, you start the game with just health and stamina. And you've actually got to go to the center of that mountain over there in the distance to unlock your mana. So I'm going to show you firstly how to get to this mountain. Secondly, there are, I believe, three different paths to the center of the mountain. And I'm going to show you what I believe is probably the easiest one. In fact, if you guys check out the timestamp in the description below, it will show you the section of the video where I basically show you how to speed run this route. And you can literally run past all the enemies if you really want to. It's quite easy to do. So say, for example, you just made a character and you're like, I want to unlock my mana and just test out how that is. Then you can run there straight away. But do bear in mind, guys, once you get to the center of the mountain and you can unlock your mana, you're going to have to give up your health and stamina to unlock your mana. Now, I'm not going to talk about the best ratio in this video, but just so you know, I'd start off small and then get more mana later on in the game. Now, if you guys haven't already watched my video on getting started and outward, I suggest watching that before this, but... Um, on this adventure, I'd recommend having some decent weaponry and armor with you and also a decent backpack. Now you can, depending on your character level and how competent and equipped you are, bring a sleep, bring a bedroll so you can actually sleep within these caverns. Now the most important thing is, is to bring yourself some tea to recover your stamina and also lots of food that's going to recover your health. And if you know how to craft them, some life potions. You're also going to want to bring with you a mining pick because then you can mine all of the different mana stones from the ore which even if you're not going to use as a mage they're very valuable so you can sell them all. You can also bring some wood and a cooking pot to make some food as you're in the tunnels but to be honest with you if you bring enough you don't really need to bring this with you at all. And again traps and poison rags anything that's going to help you defeat the enemies within depending on the level of your character if you can't deal with them yourself may it also be something to consider. So let's take a look at the map guys. Cicero is here. The city, the main city we start the game in. The Conflux Mountain is of course just over here and it's really obvious you can literally see it as soon as you leave the city. Now I'm kind of assuming that you're at the right level where you can deal with bandits and whatnot that you're going to meet on the road ahead but we're literally just going to run straight over to the mountain. You can see there's actually a hill a mountainous hill right ahead and there's a way up that hill i suggest just taking that route um and there's sometimes a few bandits of wolves in this valley uh but i've already killed most of them so they haven't respawned yet for me and you're pretty good just to make your way over so as you can see in the distance there you can see cicero's lighthouse right above my head we've come all the way up to the top of this mountain there is a loot box there you can grab um, for some different traps and supplies uh, but here we are, you can actually see the mountain itself in the distance there. And we're almost at the foothills of it. This is just a shortcut to get over this hill instead of walking all the way around and dealing with the bandits along the road. So I usually prefer to come this way. Sometimes there's also a merchant at the top here who randomly spawns and he can sell you some cool stuff. But to be honest, I wouldn't really worry about bringing money on this journey with you. Um, at all. One thing I would suggest though, especially if it's winter, is bring along some wood and a flint and steel and a cooking pot so you can actually make yourself a fire and also cook some food if you're uh, adventuring. You can also pick these berries as well as you go along, but I'm just not bothering at all. So this is the crossroads and let me show you where we are on the map. We're just here at the crossroads, just there you can see at the foot of the mountain. And now what I'm going to do guys... I'm going to switch over to summer because this mountain looks absolutely beautiful in the summer. The magic flowing from the top of the mountain itself actually makes the grass purple in this area. So let's swap over to summer and have a look. The only way up the mountain really is this spiral that leads us all the way up the side of the mountain and basically helter skelters us to the very top. Or at least as far as we can go up before we have to enter the epic dungeon which is rather difficult indeed now i have actually covered some of these locations like that location over there and some of the locations surrounding this area i'll uh, make sure you grab these turnips on the way up guys because they're actually going to be useful um if you have a look in your inventory when you grab them bulbous root veg 
bulbous root vegetables with mana restoring properties so they're actually used in making mana potions so i suggest you just grab them and also if you're going to be starving of hunger then you're going to want to eat a few of those on your way up this location now we're going to head all the way to the top of this area literally just followed the spiral staircase and you can see there's an abandoned fort over there in the distance which uh, you can actually run over there's a few chests to loot and some very rare ghost plants you can grab um, which usually you can't really access very early on in the game uh, the location inside the castle itself though is a bit more high level so i'll probably leave it for now and there's also a few other locations we can point out like that bandit camp down there we're going to go up through this archway and continuing up the mountain here but the bandit camp down there usually it's going to be abandoned there are some bandits around the area which you have to watch out for but if you're in the camp itself it's like pretty easy just to grab some loot there though do watch out for the traps and there's a rope bridge going across there you guys can see and i do believe there's actually some bandits there right now and we can have a check down there and that rope bridge leads you to a mining node where you can get some mana stone just also useful for crafting mana magicka relate oh not magicka i'm so used to playing skyrim <laughs> mana related items and resources so we'll find a lot of these in this location as well but um there are sometimes some bandits at the top here so do take care once you arrive you can also set up some traps near this wall so that guy i don't know if he's a mage but he does have a dog with him now our best bet is to probably sneak up on him kill the the guy first and then we'll sort the dog out after we could also sneak past but uh to be honest nah we're not going to do that he's got a two-handed warhammer so that's going to be quite painful if he hits us with it what's nice is if you can separate out these enemies so if you can get like one to follow you down a cliff then it makes your life a lot easier to be honest oh, this is a lady actually so she turns around i'm going to run up on her right now get my beat stick out to beat her down. Oh, I should probably actually... Oh, God, what am I doing? I need to put my bag down, guys. How foolish of me. Oh, boy. She's knocked me down with her warhammer. Right, let's back off quickly. I've messed that up totally. I didn't press tab to lock on, so she absolutely BM'd me there. What I'm going to do is drink a quick potion here. Oh, f And roll off this cliff. Did I actually drink the potion? I don't think I did. Right, I'm just going to run away quickly, and then we're going to bottle a potion just here. She is still on me, which is good. There we go. We got rid of her. This is so messy, guys. Let's charge this boy down, get rid of his armor so we can stagger him and beat the crap out of him. There we go. Perfect. That was so messy. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was a terrible example of how to fight. Are you guys are using it? um so we've got a padded helm and some beef jerky which we can eat so what i'm gonna do now guys is i'm gonna i'm gonna eat some food and i'm gonna go ahead and eat this as well and that can slowly refill our health you're also gonna find there's a loot chest here you can grab which has tripwire spikes and incendiary charges so we're gonna take all of that because we'll be using it later and there's also our first mana stone which you'll find just here on your way up the mountain that's going to give us a gravel beetle and one mana stone. Now, the gravel beetle is really good because you can use it to craft health potions later on once you unlock the recipe. And there's also some oil here, which you can get um, because we can use that to craft some torches later on. I recommend bringing two torches on this adventure, as I said earlier. So, uh, you know, if you do run out, it's not a problem. There's also some trees here so you can craft some wood and whatnot. Now, my character also has a disease currently. Lose 3% of your health per minute. Eating resource minus 15% less food it's not that bad so you know we can just eat food and it's going to still restore our health not much of a problem and there's an archway here and you guys can see it continues on round but if we check out this area through this archway 
There is another path, my friends. Another path. So we can come down here and I think there are sometimes some more bandits here, but I can't see any right now. You can find this mana stone, though. So make sure you grab that. I thought I'd cover the outside of the mountain before actually going inside. But um, you will see there is another location just here. And you can actually enter in this way. And this is called the Heroic Kingdom's Conflux Path. Now, if you guys want a separate tutorial for the Heroic Kingdom Conflux Path, I will do that in a future video. But personally, I think this one is slightly harder than the other one I'm going to show you, which is further down the mountain, in fact. So we're actually going to run back the way we came. Further on down, I just wanted to show you this, this one area because, you know, that is one way you can get to the top. It's an optional choice. Now, from just here on the map, there are actually three different entrances to the mountain. You actually come up the side here and you help to skelter upwards. The first entrance of the mountain is where this rope bridge comes across this valley and you're going to find the entrance just around here. The second entrance is a little bit further up. Across the second rope bridge you'll find another entrance here. And then the final entrance is actually further down on this side of the mountain just here. It's actually on the base of the mountain over here. Um, you guys can see that's the top of the mountain there. And this is the entrance in the distance. Um, but we're going to come over here. Uh, you can see the bandit camp on the left there. And there's a rope bridge on the left just there. Um, this is what I pointed out to you earlier. We're just um, at the bottom of this slope. Because over here we're going to find the a different, a different path for the top in fact. So I'm just going to grab these berries. Sometimes you'll get bandits here. But I don't think they've spawned back yet. I do, do think there's a chest here as well. Actually, let's have a quick check. Okay, I can't see any chest, but there is a um, a mana stone to farm. Let's grab that. And now we need to get inside. I need to warm up, so I'll probably make a fire. I recommend you guys do the same. I recommend just grabbing, um, gathering some trees if it is winter, or even if it's not winter, actually, just gather the trees anyway. Because you're going to need to use these to make some fires and grab some food while you're inside these locations. Because your character might need to get some health back. And eating food is like the most cost effective way of getting health in my opinion. So this is the Blue Chambers Conflux Path. And it's the one that I think you could probably quite easily just run through if you wanted to. Um, I mean you can technically run through them all but this one's pretty easy to run through. And if you want to fight for it, it's probably the easier one to do as well. So here we are, we're inside. And we can see there's a gentleman here. The, the Conflux Mountain Guard. How can I help you? Welcome. This is the path of the Cherosolence Ley Line that the Blue Chamber Collective maintains. If you seek the power of magic, make your way through to the end and speak with the Watchers at the heart of the mountain. Hmm. Yes, indeed. The path ahead is a labyrinth and you may easily find yourself lost. But there are markers to guide you. Those who pay heed to the wisdom of the Blue Chamber's ancestors will have little trouble navigating these halls. There is also a great number of troglodytes that make their home here, many of whom have swallowed mana stones and been transformed into shamans of their kind. Be on your guard. Okay, so now our body temper is back to normal. We're no longer cold, so we don't get a debuff. And I'm going to go ahead and drink some tea to regain my lost mana before we actually head on inside. And let's light our lantern up, and now we're ready to proceed. You'll notice there's a drop there, so <laughs> there's no way back now. I believe if you fail, you just die and come back to the start. Now, if you explore to the right, that's actually the correct direction to go. I am going to quickly go this way, though, because there's a few things we can mine down here. And I want to show you where those things are. There's a junk pile, firstly, just here which we can get some mushrooms from. This is all random. Alchemy, weather defense potion, and free wood, which I'm going to take with me. It's actually pretty lucky when you find wood. The first time I came down here, my lantern actually ran out of light, and I was like, oh my god, I'm literally running around in the dark. And I was quite lost, actually, on where to go. There's also some blood mushrooms here. Now, if you guys get lost following me, don't worry because I'm going to go back to the entrance in a moment and from there I'll show you where you should be going but right now I just want to go and harvest this mana stone and just check out this area to see if there's anything else 
while we're down here. Now, if you go down here, I do believe we sneak. You see there is a enemy there. Now, he is quite tanky and quite rather difficult to kill. You can kill him. I can probably kill him. But to be honest, it's going to give me more effort than it's really worth. Um, so I'm not going to bother. We're going to go back to the entrance now. Uh, you can see a troglodyte over there in the distance. So this is the entrance. This is where we just dropped down. This time we're going to go right, which is the correct way to go. And there's a troglodyte there. So I want to get his attention if I can. Because there's quite a few around here. So there's one coming after me now, which is good. You want to like deal with them one at a time. Let's take him out. Should be able to hit them both with my beat stick right now. So we're taking out one. And if he charges me, that's usually the best thing. Because you can kind of just step, step to the side. And then start hitting them in the back. There we go. I've gone for a very blunt force build here and you can take their mushrooms which is always good and he's got some thick oil and now i'm going to go ahead and eat some food we've got a omelet and a meat stew and i'm also being attacked by another bloody troglodyte he's almost just killed me there oh god that was close we're good we're good okay great almost died there for goodness sake um let's eat the miner's omelet as well now, we got a bit BM'd here. I'm going to take a health potion because one of these guys poison does. And poison in this game absolutely sucks. As you can see, uh, oh, it's gone now. But it literally does one health per second. And um, it just rapidly depletes your health. So let's go and use a bandage as well. We'll be able to craft lots of those down here. You can also deconstruct their weapons. Um, some of them contain mana stones. And some of them contain mushrooms. So... Once again, guys, uh, for reference, the entrance is just here, and we're effectively following these blue skulls here, and that's going to, like, you know, lead us the right direction. But we've dealt with a few of the troglodytes. There's still quite a few more. So we're going to go right here. You can see there's another blue skull, and you can see there's another blue skull down this corridor. So clearly, it's the right way to go. Now, the first thing I want to do is just go down here, because I believe there's another enemy hanging out down here. Nope, there's just a mana stone at the moment. But if you have uh, like a ranged weapon on your character, you'll see there's another troglodyte down there. He's pretty damn like tanky and he's also a wizard. So um, we'll take him out in melee. But if you want to take him out a bit easier, you can shoot him from there. So now we're at the top of this area. This time we're going to go straight on. And I'm going to go left here. And you can see there's some green weed. I'm kind of just taking my time because I want you guys to be able to explore this whole area. There's a junk pile here. Worker's boots and a shrimp, which I'm going to take. Those shrimps, by the way, are also very good for um, restoring mana potions. And I can also rip up those boots to make some cloth. Um, and then I can get some, I mean, linen. And then I can make bandages from that. There's also a dead adventurer here who's got some worker tire and also 20 gold. I'm going to take all this stuff. So we're going to quickly learn these recipes we grabbed. Um, the Fang Halberd recipe, that's pretty fun. And I'm actually going to rip this up right now. So we can get three of those. And then we can craft some bandages out of that. And I'm going to go ahead and use one of these right now. So we can just get ourselves up to max health again. Remember, you can sleep here, which is why I suggested you guys bring a bedroll. But, um, aha, another person has found us. That's good, because he's on his own. So we're going to wait for that charge attack just there. Let him go to the side and then just slash him behind. And if you want to be careful, your weapon doesn't do as much damage as mine does. Because mine kind of goes through their block attacks. Um, so it's pretty good like that. You can actually instead just um, go back to blocking, walk backwards again, wait for their charge attack, and then just go back to slashing them and killing them. Um, that's a good way to deal with them. Or you can also set up traps along this corridor. But as you can see, I'm walking back now. Um, to this crossroad and you can see there's purple there which goes downwards we want to go this way with the blue skull um, again we're going directly right from where we first came in at the entrance um, i'm going to gather these 
There's another way down there to the right. A staircase straight on. Another staircase to the left. We're going to go to the staircase to the left. Get your weapon out because there's another troglodyte here. It's a bit more higher level. And he also has a mage guy with him. He's going to cast spells at you to buff him. We're just going to take him out anyway. We don't care. We do not care, my friend. Right, there we go. Now that they're buffing each other, which is fine. I'm just going to start hitting him. He's casting some wizardry on me. One down. And this one's almost dead. You see how tanky he made the other guy, though. Just kind of annoying. I love my button mash build. No dodging, no skill required. Just absolutely destroy everything. Now, these blue uh, troglodyte kings have troglodyte staffs. So you can grab those because, I'll show you, they also contain, if you deconstruct them, like so, free mana stones. Now, considering you sell those for, I think, six gold each, that's like 18 gold. So that's pretty good. Um, there's also some more things we can mine down there, but first... Now we've taken out these guys. I think, can I mine this just here? No, I can't. How unfortunate. But there is an adventurer on the pile in this room. He has an astral potion, a life potion, alchemy warm potion. Um, I think I already know that recipe. Yes, I do. Can I mine this? No, I can't. But as you can see currently, my character, if you look at your stats, is confused, which gives him minus 25% impact resistance. And he's also in pain, which gives him minus 25% um physical resistance which is really bad so that's for the next two minutes so i kind of need to like you know bite out my time here uh we're going to go back up to the top of these stairs that does link round to here but this time we want to go right down here and i think there should be something else we can mine i believe or not or not let's try out this way we can see another troglodyte coming at us here. He's going to buff his friend. I just want to kind of like uh, bring them over here though. And he's going to charge us. Just step out of the way. And then go ham. Go full ham. Boom. Get wrecked some. Uh, now it's going to get rid of the troglodyte boy king. He's going to try and buff himself. We don't care. We're going to stagger him. Can't even do that doesn't even work for him he just gets wrecked gets absolutely wrecked i think i'm making the combat look pretty easy but uh if you guys saw my full walkthrough you'll see how stressful this game can be uh so fur helm very nice because it's winter outside pretty useful and he's also got a troglodyte staff which of course i'm going to go ahead and deconstruct once again and now okay so where we are now with this chest you actually see down there, all of that magical power, my friend, that we can harness. There's another troglodyte coming here. But effectively, once you've found that balcony area, I don't know how he missed that, that was weird. Um, you're in the right place. This chest in this balcony area, you know, didn't take us long to get here. And now we need to go through this door. But I'm not going to go through that door yet. That's where we're meant to go. But um, first, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head back. Because there's some other things that we haven't explored yet. And we obviously need to explore them. So we're going to keep this fence on our right. And we're going to carry on walking back this way. Past the other troglodyte we killed. Into this dark little area. Just here. You'll find there's a troglodyte chest. Which has some random stuff in. Usually reasonably useful. Uh, so grab that. Okay guys. Now I've shown you where the treasure chest is. I just want to go back to the main entrance. So if you've just entered. You're going to come in. You're going to go right. And then you're going to go straight on. Then once you get to this blue flag just here. And there's some like mushrooms with a lantern on the right. We're going to turn right. And we're going to go straight on. And we're going to carry on going straight on. You get to this wall. And then you can see you go sort of left here. Then you go straight on here. And now you see a stone staircase there. Stone staircase there. We're going to take this path here with the glowing purple thing. And we're going to run around the corner, carry on going to the right. Uh, you can see the fence on the left there. That means you're in the right place. The chest again. So now we just get to this wooden door and we're in the next area. The Conflux Chambers, my friend. It's where we're meant to be going. 
Ah, yes, some more yummy mushrooms to eat. And some more star mushrooms, my favourite kind of shroom. Now we're going to carry on. There's only really one way to go here. To the right is where we want to go. You can also go left, though. If we run up here, let's have a little look. You'll see there is a red banner. And this takes you to the Heroic Kingdom's Conflux Path, which I showed you guys the entrance to, but we didn't actually go inside. And there's also another path entrance there as well. Um, but we're going to go now straight down to the right here. All these paths obviously lead to the same chamber. So uh, another adventurous corpse. Take everything here. My bag is overweight. Well, we better fucking throw something away then, eh? All right, let's drop our wood and then we can carry on into the main conflux chamber itself. As you can see, it looks pretty trippy. I don't actually know what's down this way. I think there's just some, uh, oh yeah, blood mushrooms, which are really good. Grab those all the time, man. So good for making health potions, which you'll need later. Now, I don't really know where this goes, but there's just some water here and a boat, which you can't actually do anything with. You can also gather clean water here, though. And you can see there's some kind of enemy up there. I don't know what that is, but there is a chest. Is he going to attack me? Let's see if we can take him out. Oh my god! thought he was going to fall there. I was panicking. I think we're good here. Oh, I oh, let him hit me there. God damn. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, God, he's going to fucking destroy me. Fuck. God damn it. Okay, so we're back in the same place. Ironically, even though I died, uh, you literally spawn in this chamber, so it didn't really make any difference other than the fact... I completely lost my bag and everything I had. So here we are in the Conflux Mountain, and this is the Fifth Watcher. Welcome. Bow your head in respect, for you have come to the end of a ley line. The place where the very world itself will pour its power into you if you make room for it. To open yourself to the mana is to open yourself to the flow of our world. To use magic is to command the world to obey your desires. Master magic, and you master the flow that echoes through us all. If you are prepared to sacrifice some of yourself for it, and you are prepared to miss many nights of sleep, we welcome you. May the power of mana lead you to the road to success. Okay, this place looks absolutely awesome, though. Just loads of mana stones floating around this laser beam. Boy. So they've got a little hut here. Where you can come, and there's somewhere to sleep. Welcome. I am a watcher of the ley line. Now, this is, this is the third watcher, and we can ask him some questions about mana. Can you teach me magic? To unlock the power of mana, you must first give up some of your mortal vitality to a ley line. If you wish to be a mage, touch the crystal at the center of the chamber. You can literally ask these guys any lore questions you might have. And they can tell you a little bit about the world of magic. But um, in order to actually unlock the mana, you have to come up to the top here. Um, and then you can give up some of your life and stamina to actually unlock a mana bar. I don't recommend giving up too much of your life. As you see, you can still get absolutely wrecked by everything in this game. So this is the first Watcher. So, you have come. I sensed that someone who had the potential for magic was on their way. If you wish to gain magic... You must first give. You must sacrifice health and stamina to the ley line and return what you give up will be given back to you as mana. Be careful how much of your life and stamina you give up because you can never get it back. Dun, dun, dun. The first time you gain mana, you will gain your first spell, the spark. It may seem small and weak, but when combined with other spells or components, it can produce powerful effects. So basically, for example, you can summon like a magical sigil, and then if you cast your spark spell within that, it will turn into a fireball. But um, alone, it's not that amazing. So obviously, in order to activate it, 
we interact with it. But this character is not going to have mana, so I'm not actually going to do that myself. Maybe at some point we'll make a mage character and I can go over some of the abilities and stuff. Wow, my bag is here. Oh my god, have I ever been so happy to get my all my items back. Jesus, thank goodness for that. And here we have another watcher. The fourth. Feel free to use one of our boats to return to the surface. When your business here is concluded, it will take you to the beach far from Cicero. I want to buy something though. And as you can see, he will sell us a bunch of different things like the master's staff, which actually decreases mana cost by 20%. So this is a really good item, even though it does cost 1,000 gold. Uh, you can also get a Charakaram, which, um, which you can learn spells for. And it's basically kind of like a spinning disc that you can send to attack people. It's pretty cool. Um, and then there are some other types of staffs that also reduce the cost of Magicka. For example, this one reduces the cost of mana by 15%. But it is literally only, only a quarter of the price of the one that reduces it by minus 20%. And again, roads will also reduce the cost of um, the mana that you use. So they're 100% recommended. Oh, and also guys, you'll notice that when you're mining all of these mana stones, you might also find some hack manatites, which is a dark gem with intricate magical properties, as you can see. It also can be given to certain craftsmen in Lavant. Um, to make wizard robes for you so that's probably your next spot to go if you do want to make a mage like character but if i sell him everything i'm going to get another 336 gold just for mining most of this location so that's pretty damn good and with that all done we can finally exit this location and we're going to end up on the beach near one of the bandit castles which is another interesting location to do with the story and as you can see we end up on the very snowy currently beach Right next to one of the bandit castles, the fortress, just here, Van Davel Fortress, uh, which is a very interesting location to do with the story, and I recommend definitely giving it a visit. You can also kill these crab-like creatures on the beach here, and gather some blue sand, which can be used to make some armor back in Cicero, so I recommend grabbing a few bits while you're here to do that with. But uh, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Make sure you subscribe and press that bell icon for more outward video guides and tips and tricks if you guys want any like requested videos let me know what you're struggling with in the comment section and uh, i'll try and do my best to cover that but uh thank you for watching me eso and i will see you in the next outward video goodbye and have a fantastic day